India, as one of the most potential emerging markets in the world, claiming the second largest population on the globe, has endless factors and advantages that can make itself one of the most dominant power around the world. It, however, hasn't lived up to the world's expectations as problems emerged from various aspects. With serious corruption and bureaucracy in the government, huge disparity between countries and cities, limited social mobility, as well as unintegrated infrastructure, the road to dominance and prosperity for India is still a long way to go. Good afternoon. Welcome to AWA Country Report. I am Win. I'm Amy. And I'm Ellen. The country focus this month is India. Today we're going to walk you through the dark sides of the India and tell you the real stories behind the country. India is one of the fast growing countries in the world. It has a nickname of the second China. However, under the rapid growth, many fundamental problems in India still remain unsolved. It ranks 60 among 148 countries in the 2014 Global Competitiveness Report. What other major problems being encountered by this factor-driven economy? Today we are bringing three real stories happening in India to you to illustrate the obstacles faced by the country. We will cover three problems that bring detrimental effects to the society. The first problem is related to infrastructure in India. Now, let's have a look at the problems within this aspect. Imagine this. You're going on a road trip with your friends in India and the road is more rugged than the time back in South California. And every 30 miles, you're stopped by the tyrants and actually paying large amount of tolls. And after a long day drive, you finally have yourself accommodated in a hostel in Mumbai. However, the electricity and water you're selling goes up at night. What would you think? India, as the second largest population in the world and the third largest purchasing power parity, its infrastructure, however, ranks 85 out of 148 in the world according to the World Competitiveness Report. Therefore, it is crucial for India to improve its infrastructure so as to make itself a better competitor in the world in the future. The infrastructure in India could be divided into three categories. There are telecommunications, energy, and transportation. When we further look into these questions, the energy industry, to begin with, is mostly controlled by the state-owned companies, especially in the aspect of natural gas and petroleum, where 90% of them are controlled by the state-owned companies, which has already led to questionable transparency and operational inefficiency. Secondly, the problems also take place in India's transportation, with plenty of unfair tariffs and terrible quality of roads, the transportation could be a stone that hinders the growth of India. And the cr common problems of India's infrastructure can be seen in the ineffective cooperative relations between the government and the private sectors. Therefore, we have conducted an interview with an owner of Countryside Logistics Company to ask him about his opinion towards the infrastructural issues in India. Today, we are happy to invite the owner of Vi Logistics Company to share some ideas with us on your opinions as well as some of the personal experience on the infrastructure of India. Good morning, Mr. Vaishak. Good morning. So Vaishak, is there anything you want to share with us on the infrastructure of India? Yes, sure. I think India has great potentials on the development of the infrastructure. For example, our output of electricity ranks the third in the world and we are developing the Delhi-Mumbai Industrial Corridor which is the biggest infrastructure expansion project in the history with more than $100 billion worth of reviews. It sounds really promising, so is there anything that will satisfy you? Speaking of this, I'm really irritated by the government sector. Sometimes the attitude towards us is impatient and rude, and the form and formality really bothers me. Because I own a small logistics company, I rely heavily on the infrastructure of transportation. But I'm always charged with a lot of tolls with every delivery. I see. So the toll has, has largely raised your cost, haven't it? Yes. 
and sometimes the demarcation on the responsibilities between government and private sectors is unclear, and the miscommunication caused a lot of delays and uncertainties, and has, it has brought a lot of extra costs to my company. So the problem also lies between the government and the private sector. So how is the dispute resolution mechanism? It is really weak, and who has control over the capital has loud a voice in us. I think the unbalanced power is the main problem in this case. Okay, thank you very much for your sharing. We hope that these drawbacks can be solved as soon as possible, so as to make India a better competitor in the world in the future. To simply put, India has a chance to stand higher in the global stage but only after it resolves the core problems between sectors. And our suggestions would be, firstly, structure the projects more appropriately. Secondly, reduce the regulatory uncertainties and delays. And last but not least, manage the projects more efficiently from bid to execution. We sincerely provide suggestions, hoping to make India a more competitive country. Now, let's proceed to the second category, Corruption. Hey Wang, apart from infrastructure, can we come up with another problematic factor that hinders India's future development? Sure. I think that corruption is another serious problem in India. Indeed. India has been troubled by the corruption for a long time. A 2005 study done by Transparency International in India found that more than 62% of the people had first-hand experience of paying bribe. Such pervasive existence showcases corruption as one of the biggest challenges that India is currently facing. Besides, in the 2013-14 Global Competitiveness Report, the corruption is the third most problematic factor for doing business. Seeing this, the Indian government should do more to solve the harsh situation. You are right. And it also should be noted that the corruption has a much bigger impact on below poverty line households, since large expenditure of money as bribe could make their life even worse. However, without paying the bribe, they could not get access to public service, such as electricity and water supply, even though some of the services are very essential for living or targeted at BPL households. Their requests of public service are often set aside overlooked by the officials, who give priority to people that benefit them. The corruption, combined with universal poverty in India, imposes great difficulty on the living of house BPL households. Indeed. The corruption imposes great difficulties on the people at the bottom of society. Now, let us bring in Alan from Delhi. Alan is currently talking to a father from VLT household about the corruption. Thank you, Amy. So, Ratchet, how do you view the corruption in your country? Yes, Alan. My family is deeply trapped in poverty. Sometimes my, my children and other family members are bullied by our neighbors. We try to seek help from police before, but they always ignore our request. People always say that you need to bribe the police first, that you can get help from them. But as you can see, we don't even have enough money to buy food and water to feed ourselves. How can we get extra money to bribe the police? The corruption has really made our life even worse. I'm so sorry to hear about that. As we know that the government has uh, recently has published some laws aimed to get rid of corruption. Do you think they work? I don't think so. The corruption in public service remains at the same level. The laws and institutions are not fully implemented. Because no one is willing to forego the benefits that they can get. Thank you, Ratchet. Now, I'll pass the time to Amy. Thank you, Alan. Wayne, what do you think is a possible solution to solve the problem of corruption? Inside the government, a more detailed reward and punishment system should be established. Reorienting staff to serve BBL households with the special attention and on a priority basis is also required. Moreover, outside the government, an independent supervision organization should be set up 
to inspire the inner operation of government and deal with the complaint from citizens. Indeed, the government can do a lot to help alleviate the situation. Next, we'll show you the story of a poor woman in rural part of India and illustrate the problem of lack of social mobility. Sophia is a typical lady born in the rural area in India, suffering from extreme poverty. She finds it impossible to find a job in the labor market due to her low educational level and sexual discrimination. And she is living at the bottom of the social hierarchy system in the society. I only attended primary school. It is impossible for me to get a job. Most employers reject me as lady, I'm weak and as unskilled woman. Another case system in India, once you are in the class of sujas, you have to stay in this place forever. You have no chance to move on. The case system is still deeply rooted in India as the years go by. Under the social hierarchy system, Indians are divided into five classes, namely Brahmi, Kshatriyas, Vaisyas, Sudras, and Pariah. Sadly, the class of Sudras, which are the unskilled workers and peasants, are the biggest groups in India. Once you're Sudras or Pariah, you can hardly move up to other classes. I am, I am living with my mother-in-law, my husband, and four children. We mainly rely on my husband's source of income and struggle to make a living. He earns around 2,500 rupees a month, which is just around 60 US dollars. Boiled rice is the only food for Sophia and her family every day. Sometimes, Sophia would go to pick up some trash with her children to get some extra money. Piles of trash are seen from the slum where Sophia's family lives in. It smells really bad and is seriously contaminated. The hygiene is really poor, clearly. It is a place without hope. Sometimes I feel really desperate and hopeless when I look at my four lovely children. While some other Indian children from urban areas are going to school happily and leading a life of fulfillment, I can't even afford them to, uh, to have a normal meal, let alone attending high school. She sees no hope under the hierarchy system in India where it is nearly impossible to climb up to other social ladder. Nobody born in the slum can escape from the tragic fate here. And Sophia does not walk alone. The lack of social mobility makes this place hopeless. However, while they suffer, many rich people from upper classes are lavishing their money. The disparity between the rural and urban area and the lack of social mobility in India is so heartbreaking. And the disparity has seriously impeded its development as a fast-growing country. What can the government do to help? The government can actually help by providing more welfare and setting policies. Firstly, by improving the transportation system, as Flora mentioned. Education could be more accessible to the next generation. As they become more and more knowledgeable, they will have a higher probability to climb up to other social ladder and gain more opportunities in the society. Apart from this, the government can also continue to launch more poverty alleviation campaigns in the rural area. The focus of the short-term campaigns can be providing daily necessities and food to make the poor um, self-sufficient to make a basic living. In the long run, more employment opportunities should also be provided by the government to guarantee that those people who are willing to work hard and get a job in the market and sustain a living. With these measures, the disparity between rural and urban areas will be enhanced and women like Sophia can lead a happier life. India, as one of the most potential countries in the world, has plenty of aspects expected to thrive, yet plenty of rooms to improve as well. With regards to infrastructure, firstly, it should be more appropriate project structuring. Secondly, the regulatory delays and uncertainties should be reduced. Last but not least, fostering the efficiency of project management from bid 
to execution is important as well. On the other hand, the problem associated with corruption should be tackled as soon as possible. Inside the government, there should be a more integrated system of rewards and punishment. In addition, reorienting staff to serve the BBL household is urgently required as well. And outside the government, it would be better to set up an independent supervision organization to oversee the operation of the government. Finally, regarding the aspect of disparity within India, the government should firstly improve the transportation system so as to make edu education more accessible. Secondly, in the short run, the poverty alleviation campaigns should be held more frequently. And in the long run, the government should provide more employment opportunities in order to sustain the living of the Indian people. With these measures provided, we look forward to seeing the unprecedented improvement and growth of India. Thanks for joining the AWA News Report and the front line of India's problems. See you next time.